Hey, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. So look, today we're gonna to talk about the three biggest mistakes people make when buying an investment property. Don't make them. You don't wanna make these kinds of problems for yourself. All right, so look, number one, most common thing is people overpay. When I say overpay, even paying full market is paying too much. Uh, you can't make any money as an investor if you pay full price because then you become a speculator and then there's always a chance values are going to go down like they're doing right now. So look, so number one, overpay. Don't overpay. That's a mistake right there, right? Okay. And really that number one is the biggest and that's, that's really, that says it all for number one. Now number two is going to be not investigating the property. Okay. They're, and I'm talking about, you, you don't want to buy a property without really checking it out. And I'm talking about day and night and weekends. And now this could be different for a lot of different reasons, but uh, you may have some real inconvenient uh, neighbors and noises and distractions that you're not aware of unless you fully check it out. So I'm talking about go there in the morning, watch people get in and out, go to work, uh, end of the day, come back at night. See if you don't have somebody, you know, making some sort of disturbances or, you know, you just never know what you're going to have. Uh, I've, I've seen, uh, you know, obviously you've had the, the horror stories of kids playing drums or practicing drums next door or the guy that's got, a, you know, a band going on next door, you know, in his garage and talk to the neighbors, you find out maybe he's been a nuisance for years and he doesn't back off. I mean, I'm just saying these are things you want to consider, especially if it's going to be your home where you plan on living and relaxing uh, and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, having the, you know, enjoying it. Uh, the other things is, when I'm going to bring up some other things, walkability, the amenities nearby. Look, one of the biggest features you can have for a property is walkability. Can you walk to a store? Can you walk to a bar? Can you walk to a restaurant? I've got properties where I can walk to a movie theater, have a couple of drinks, walk back. That's a nice amenity. And when I rent those properties to my tenants, I'm sure to, I, I point it out to them. Also, I even got a lake nearby that most people don't even know it's there. They can walk to the lake as well. So, uh, so I'm going to put this down here is investigate, but I want to bring a little more emphasis to what that means. And that means night and day take a look at it night and day go there on the weekends as well check it out uh, walk the neighborhood you know also check the crime you know check you can check anybody you can there's good there's good reports on crime and history uh, in an area, you can find out very quickly if there's any kind of problems. If you got the Ring app or talk to somebody in the neighborhood, you'll find all sorts of stuff going on nearby or not, and which that's what you want. So, and you know, everybody's got a limit to how much of that stuff they can take. You know, some people it's going to be quite often, but you know, they have their properties locked down. They expect it, they anticipate it, and they prepare for it. But every place is different. So, and the schools. That's the other thing is schools. If, it, if schools are important, are they going to be important to your tenants? Check out your schools. Because the schools, if you're in a bad school district, you know, listen, I can tell you right now, my kids go into school, I judge a school by the students, not necessarily the teachers. I go in, I take a look at the students. If the, if the students look terrible, my kid ain't going to that school. That's just all there is to it. So, again, and maybe even take that step. But talk to the people that have kids in that school district. Very important. They'll either recommend it or not. Uh, so schools, and let's see, what else can we talk uh, Yeah, restrictions. Okay, this is, this is kind of, this is all part of investigating, but it's kind of a whole different level. Restrictions. A lot of people move into a neighborhood, and they go pull a big RV in their front yard, and then somebody comes over and kindly tells them, hey, you can't park your RV in the front. And they're like, the hell, you, I can't. And guess what? They're right. You're probably wrong because in the CCNRs and in the, in the covenants and the restrictions, it may in there, be in there. They no RVs, okay? Then where you can't park your truck if you're a plumber, you know, can, they don't want anything but, they don't want anything but home type vehicles, cars, you know what I mean? SUV, the normal stuff that you'd have. They don't want to see any uh, utility vehicles. Uh, you know, so it's a real thing. So always check out the restrictions, okay? And now let's say 
you know, you want to do a, an Air an Airbnb, you need to look at your local restrictions, your local coordinate authorities. So local authority, right? Local. And I'm talking about your, your, your local city restrictions because you may be in an area where Airbnbs were fine last year and this year, guess what? They've outlawed them, basically. There's a lot of people that bought properties uh, and there's a beach community that I actually have rented for many years when I go down there with my family. And one year they were cool, and guess what? The next year, they weren't so cool. And it devastated the people because some people were making $30,000 a month on that Airbnb, and now they're back to $10,000 a month because they have to rent it maybe three months at a time or you know, all year round, where if they're renting it by the week, you know, they make you know, three times as much. So check your local restrictions going to be doing an Airbnb. Very, very important. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, I think we might have about covered it right there, to be honest. But So that's it. Don't overpay. Investigate the property, the neighborhood thoroughly, day and night, weekends. Uh, restrictions. Check your local restrictions with your, with your uh, neighborhood association, if there is a neighborhood association. And then again, uh, your uh, local restrictions, the, you know, the city authority city ordinances. Uh, and then the other thing, I'll leave one more thing, taxes. A lot of people don't realize, especially if you're going from one state to another, you'll get sticker shock. And there's parts of Texas and New Jersey that are three times the rate of what they are in California. People go from California, think they're escaping high prices, and they come to one of these other states. And what they find out is that the taxes on uh, their little place is like they're getting taxed on a mansion. They're three times higher in some states over and above California, and I'm sure there's other other states that are as cheap as California. I don't know any off the top of my mind, off the top of my head, but look at your tax rate, especially if you're moving from one one state into another. It's very important. It'll, believe me, people get their first tax bill and they laugh and then they cry because they realize it's not a mistake. It's that's what it is. So all right. So listen. Uh, those are the three big things. Don't fall victim to those things like so many people do. You make a bad investment, you'd be tied up for a decade and won't be able to get out. That's the worst thing that can happen to anybody. I don't care if you're young or old. You make a bad investment, you're, you're going to be doomed for a long time. So look, if you enjoyed what you just saw, get my book. You can get it on Audible, Kindle, and paperback on Amazon. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, you can get a lot more. So hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. It helps the channel. Uh, you know, these... Things that I just showed you, uh, don't take them lightly. They're of major importance to anybody, especially if you're a new buyer. Look, I've been buying real estate for 42 years. I've got over 185,000 square feet of rentals. Manage it myself. You'll learn a lot here on my channel. Thanks for watching. See you later.